Bob Claggett from the channel I Like to Make Stuff. In our videos, we make all sorts of different stuff, from fun to functional objects. And this is Sailor Versus, a series where other creators and I test our skills to see if we have what it takes to be in the Navy. Yesterday on our channel, we made a really simple emergency shelter using some feedback from one of the CBs from the Navy. Today we're back with SW2 Priester to hear about all the awesome work that he does as a CB. So SW2, what are the CBs? Hey Bob, so the CBs are the construction workers of the military. That's awesome. So can you give me kind of a rundown of what you do for the Navy? What does your day look like on a regular basis? We compose of seven rates. As you said, I'm a steel worker, second class. So if carpentry work is uh, you know more of your thing, then you could be a builder. If you like to drive trucks, we have equipment operators and you want to be an electrician. We have the CEs, uh, utilities men, the plumbers of the CBs, construction mechanics, and then you have your engineering aides, which they, they'll go out and they'll survey the land. That's pretty awesome, because it sounds like there's an entering point for a whole bunch of different interests, and all of those interests have an exit point as well, like an outside job that you could definitely take those skills out of the military when you're ready. Yes, yes, that, that's, that's a job that could carry over into the civilian side. What interests you about working with the Seabees? When I think of the military, I always think of combat, defense, things like that. And I hadn't even considered the fact that there's an entire group of people in the military that just build things. And that's a different way of looking at the military for me, so I wanted to learn more about it. Traditionally, like in, in uh, action movies about the military, you'll see only one sided, and that's only the war scenes. However, you know, in, in the military, you have a lot of different aspects, you know, and construction is just one of those aspects. Then. That tells me that you probably don't just work on ships. When I think of the Navy, I think of very large ships, but I assume you don't do all the construction on ships. Where else do you work? So as a CB, our main mission is contingency construction. And what that is, is us getting deployed somewhere very rapidly. Say if there was a hurricane or a natural disaster that happens uh, somewhere around the world, they would deploy us to go and we will build like schools, hospitals. What's the coolest project that you've gotten to work on in one of those deployments? So the coolest project that I've personally worked on was we went to the Philippines in this place called Tacloban. They just recently got hit by Typhoon Yolanda and we were able to build two elementary schools and we also did some renovation work on a hospital to get an opportunity to go there and to help them out and um, you know just get to interact with the, the locals. That was uh, probably the biggest thing for me. That's pretty awesome. Was that the type of work that you expected to be doing when you joined the Navy? Actually, when I joined, I thought I'll be pretty much just working uh, in a, like a steel shop. However, we go out to different places around the world. So we're not just in a shop. We're, we're working in the field and we work on ships. So it, there's a lot of opportunities. Nice. You are a welder now. Did you come in with those skills or did you learn them after you enlisted? Actually, when I was in high school, I did uh, some plumbing. I went to a technical high school. After that, I got a job TIG welding. And then once I joined the military and I became a CB, I learned how to stick weld and MIG weld also. Well, I see that you're pretty good at building things. How did you gain all this experience? Honestly, I'm just kind of learning it as I go. I used to do software development and now I get to make different things and all of it is really just solving some particular problem. So it doesn't matter whether it's metalworking or woodworking or code. If I can see a problem and I can work through to get a solution, that's the thing that really makes me excited about what I do. I've got a little bit of welding experience, um, just at, you know, as a DIY type person. But right now, I want to get some tips from you on vertical welding. When would you use a vertical welding? Like, what's a real-world situation where this type of thing would come into play? So, a real-world situation, like I said, like when I was in the Philippines and we were building the frames for the metal trusses, that was the one time that I used the actual vertical welding experience. Other than that, you you would just use it uh, mostly for fabricating your metals prior to uh, heading out. So, what makes it more difficult than? non-vertical welding. With uh, vertical welding, the, the reason why it's so difficult is because as you're welding, you have the molten that's going to drip down due to gravity, opposed to the easier position, which will be the flat welding. What is the prep work that we need to do to these pieces to get ready to weld them? The first thing you want to do is make sure that you clean them off. So you'll probably use a grinding wheel or a metal brush, and then you want to set them up. So what I usually do, I'll put on a tack weld, and then you can put them in a vise, and then as you're going with the weld, you want to make sure that you just keep your, your rod at a 45 degree angle and just stay 
nice and smooth. Right on. I've always got some acetone around. I use that to kind of clean off the metal. And these pieces that I've got, they're freshly cut, so they don't really need to be ground down. But do you guys end up using chemicals to clean them, or do you pretty much just go with the grinder? So it depends uh, how our metal came to us. Usually, we, we would put some acetone on them, just clean off all the, uh, the grease or anything that's on it. And then primarily, we would use just a grinding wheel, especially after we just got done cutting it with the oxyacetylene torch. Before I start, the first thing I'm gonna do is just put on my safety glasses and my face shield, because safety's paramount. Now, so what, what I wanna do is, uh, first I wanna prep my metal to uh, make it smooth and make it nice and clean for the weld. I wanna put on my safety gloves, so I'll start grinding. We have our metal all good to go. We prepped it. All right, I think I understand the process of vertical welding. Let's uh, gear up. We're gonna give it a shot and see how it goes. Cool? Sounds cool, Bob. Day. I'm better at vertical welding than I am horizontal welding. <laughs> Big thanks to SW2 Priester for the information about vertical welding and just telling me all about the CBs. If you want to find out more about his career and the other job opportunities in the Navy, hit the link down in the description and make sure you click through to see me go head to head with the CBs.